Ever wondered if you could build a Lego robot that solves a Rubik's Cube without breaking the bank? Today, I'm going to show you how I created a fully functional Rubik's Cube solving robot using just one Lego Technic set and all for under 150 bucks. Stick around for the epic finale where our creation comes to life and solves this cube. Hi, I'm Prof Bricks, helping kids learn robotics with Lego products since 2008. And now let's dive into this exciting challenge together. Imagine the excitement of April 30, 2007, when I uploaded my very first YouTube video. It featured a prototype of a LEGO Mindstorm NXT robot, and not just any robot, it was one that could handle the legendary Rubik's Cube. In the next few months, I uploaded more videos, each one revealing a new step of innovation. The robot didn't just manipulate the cube, it could actually solve it. It works in steps. A PC scans the cube, calculates the solution and then sends it to the robot, which physically turns the faces to solve the puzzle. The very first video went viral. And for a good reason. Back in 2007, seeing a LEGO robot solve a Rubik's Cube in under a minute was nothing short of revolutionary. It was a groundbreaking innovation that captured the imagination of tech enthusiasts everywhere. That humble robot sparked inspiration across the engineering world, leading to the creation of the Cube Stormer 2 by Gilday and Dobson. Since those early days, my own quest of making cube solvers continued with more robots made with LEGO and other building systems. Check out some of these incredible machines. But here's the thing, none of these robots could be built with the LEGO sets you'd usually find on store shelves. The LEGO Mindstorm NXT set was quite an investment at $250 back in 2006, which is roughly $400 today. So this got me thinking, what if I were to tackle the same challenge today, 18 years later? Imagine the possibilities. So here's the top three questions that pop out in my head. Which modern LEGO set would be my go-to equipped with servo motors and a programmable hub? What cutting-edge technologies are at my disposal now that weren't even a blip on the radar in 2007? And most importantly, how can I streamline the development process to save time and effort? Let's tackle the questions in order. First, which LEGO set should I choose to build the next generation cube solver? Let's explore some options. There was the LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor set. It was super cool and cost 360 bucks, but it's not available anymore. Then there's the LEGO Education Spike Prime. It's still in production, but cost $400. And you can find it in regular toy stores, at least here in Italy. And what about LEGO Boost? It's a fantastic set with motors and color sensor, all for 160 bucks. Sadly, it's not sold anymore, but it's still very popular. I find it so inspiring that I made over 30 models with it, including, guess what? An amazing robot that solves a Rubik's Cube. But wait! I said I wanted to use a LEGO set that's still available now, with Bluetooth connectivity and at least two motors. If a sensor to scan the cube isn't included, I'll figure something out to do that, but more on that later. So I searched high and low, and I think I found a winner. It's the LEGO Technic Control Plus Audi RS Q e-tron 42160. It's a remote control car that retails for $170, but you can get it for $140 online. I'll put a link below the video if you want to get one. This amazing set comes with everything you need to build robots. A programmable hub, three servo motors, a decent number of LEGO Technic pieces and a few gears. We'll see what I can do with it. Now that we got a LEGO set under $150 that fits the bill, let's dive into the tech side of things. The LEGO Technic Hub 85824 is like the brain of our robotic creations, equipped with Bluetooth low energy connectivity. With its factory firmware, it's good just for remote control cars. Indeed. You can steer it around the LEGO Control Plus app or the Powered Up app, but it's still just following orders. And that's where Pybrix comes into play. This alternative firmware transforms all LEGO hubs into programmable powerhouses using MicroPython. Think of it as giving your LEGO creation a mind of its own, capable of running sophisticated programs stored directly on the hub. Now, the Technic Hub might be powerful enough to tackle a Rubik's Cube solving algorithm, but the 42160 set lacks a sensor, so it can go solo in any case. In 2007, I had to use a PC and a webcam to scan the cube and compute the solution. Fast forward to today, and we've got web apps in JavaScript that can tap into your device's cameras and Bluetooth right from your browser. This tech leap means we can write apps that run on any browser-enabled device, turning your smartphone 
into a super sensor for our Lego robots. So let's use the smartphone to scan and solve the cube and tell the robot which moves to apply to solve the cube. Once I picked all the technology I needed for this project, it was time to write some software. But here's the kicker. Over the years, I've evolved into what I like to call an efficiently lazy programmer. Why reinventing the wheel when I can leverage existing tools? So back in May 2024, I embarked on a mission to create a web app to solve the Rubik's Cube without writing a single line of code. Now, you might be wondering if that's even possible. Well, let me talk about the first version of my app which I used for my Lego Boost Cube Solver robot. This version couldn't scan the cube with a camera. It was the color sensor to do that. Instead, this app acted as a bridge, receiving the cube state from the robot via Bluetooth Low Energy, calculating the solution, and then sending it back to the robot. And here's the bold statement, without writing a single line of code. How did I pull off this magic trick? Well, I used ChatGPT. I affectionately named it Gepetto a nodbot to GPT and the famous creator of a wooden puppet you might have heard of. This name helps me humanize the process, making it feel like I'm collaborating with a crafty old friend. But using Gepetto alone is not enough to complete this ambitious task. You need a method to tackle complex projects. As I always tell my students, the secret to tackling big problems is to break them into smaller, manageable ones. It's all about divide and conquer, so let me break down for you all the steps I followed to solve this problem. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch with a Rubik's Cube solving algorithm. Also, my goal was to make the Solberg algorithm accessible online, sending the cube state to a server and getting the optimal solution back. Now, here's where the magic of Herbert Koshkemba's algorithm comes into play. It's famous for solving any cube in 20 moves at most. But since finding this optimal solution can take time, I aimed for a solution of maximum 24 moves, which is still pretty efficient. Koshemba even provides a Python implementation of his algorithm. To realize this, I installed a service on a server with help from Geppetto, my digital assistant. While Geppetto's instructions were clear, it wasn't effortless. Sure, I didn't write code from scratch, but I had to rely on my solid programming experience to copy and paste the code it provided in the right places. In the end, getting a cube solution is as easy as typing a web address and reading the solution written in the web page. Once I had my solver algorithm up and running, accessible from anywhere in the world, the next step was to create an app to serve as the link between the robot hardware and the online solver. With Geppetto's assistance, I developed a web app to bridge the gap between the algorithm and the robot. Despite the impressive quality of the code generated by ChatGPT, I still needed to dive into Bluetooth documentation, manually tweaking several components using my expertise. The takeaway here is that the output of ChatGPT should be taken with a grain of salt. And finally, the moment of truth, a moment that pays off all the effort. Let's test the web app with the Lego Boost robot. Look at that, this robot works like a charm. But here's the next challenge. How can we make the new robot based on the Audi e-tron scan the cube without using a color sensor? Even before building the new robot with the Audi e-tron, I started adding an amazing new feature to the app to let it take pictures of the cube faces using the device camera. Once again, Geppetto was a big help, but it also made plenty of mistakes, which meant I had to pay attention. However, here's the result. Check out how I can adjust the capture windows for the nine little facelets and change their position, spacing, size, and even perspective to make sure this will work with any smartphone and any future robot I will build. And now let's talk about building the new robot using the unusual mix of parts from the LEGO Technic Audi 42160. It's funny to start with a car, something so different from the final result, and tinker with the pieces until I get a working machine. I repurposed the wheels and stable non-slip supports. These smooth curved pieces are perfect for guiding the cube and letting it slide neatly into position. And the car suspensions? They became springs to hold the smartphone firmly in place. All these flip-flop beams with alternating holes were super useful for building strong structures. And these slick panels, originally meant for the car's bodywork, let me add some style. To drive the arm, I didn't have the right gears to boost the motor torque, so I had to use the differential with these chunky yellow gears. And to rotate the platform, same problem, not enough torque to twist the faces of the cube. 
So I'm using two motors in parallel. The robot works best with speed cubes. I'll be using this original Rubik's speed cube with alignment magnets. It gives a strange satisfaction to turn a face and feel it snap perfectly into place. I'll drop a link below if you want to grab one like this. Ta-da, it's ready, let's test it. First, let's try a cube with just one face turn to see if everything works. Now let's mix it up a little and see if the apps find the best shortest solution. What if we go big and try the legendary super flip scramble? Cool, huh? I guess you want to build this crazy beast too. I put a link below the video. You'll get access to the detailed binding operating instructions and to the web app to make it work. But make sure you read the disclaimer below first. Ah, and if you're looking for a LEGO robotics kit for less than $160, watch this next.